Hello everyone, welcome back to this new video. In this video we're going to talk about the dynamic route that was introduced with Umbraco 13. Like you can see, we are running Umbraco version 13, and this is release candidate 2. So we probably all know the multi node tree picker and uh, xpath that was provided before Umbraco 13. Well, unfortunately uh, for many, uh, the xpath will be removed re uh, soon. Not in Umbraco 13, but in uh, future releases. And just to make sure the multi node tree picker doesn't lose its value, uh, Braco decided to add a different way of using to set your dynamic route and it's called dynamic route and what it does is exactly like you would expect when opening the multi node tree picker uh, we can see we're starting so this is the route at the blocks page on the left side because this blocks page has uh, block 1, 2 and 3 in it we can now use the multi node tree picker, open it and uh, select our blocks and then like you can see these two blocks have been selected we can save and publish so how does this work? So what we're doing is I created a new document type called uh, block picker, which has uh, its node type to content with a dynamic root. If you look at this from an empty data type, you can see we now have to choose our uh, a root type. So we can just pick a root node manually, which will allow us to pick anything. Uh, we can still use xpath in this version like we're used to, or we can now choose dynamic root, which is new. So back at the block picker, I've reset it, and now we need to ch do a couple of things. First of all, we need to choose our origin. And our origin is basically where does the query, dynamic query start. So is it either the root uh, of this editing node, uh, maybe the direct parent, the current node, uh, the site, so this might not be the root, but maybe the nearest node with uh, a host name attached, or we can choose a specific node, which, which is basically the same as using this one, but then we get the extras of adding extra query steps. So in the example of my block picker, I choose the root, and now we just have the root, right? So if we save this and we try to use this, you can see that now we're at the root of home, but now we still have the blocks folder. I need to open it manually. And to fix that, we can add an extra query step. And the extra query step uh, has a couple of options, so uh, nearest ancestor or self, nearest uh, furthest ancestor or self, nearest descendant, furthest descendant or self, or there's a custom one. What we want to do, we are at the root of our website, we want the nearest descendant um, of type blocks. This way we'll automatically select the blocks page, which contains all our blocks. We can save this and if I now run it, you can see that it still works. So block one, two, three. And to show this, I have the second website on the left called example.com. This also has blocks, um, but these are A, B, C. And if I now go to content, we'll only see A, B, C. We won't see uh, the blocks from the other website. This is a very common use case when working with XPath before, is that you would go to the website you're currently in, and then you might want to pick a folder, um, like a block picker, or maybe an author picker. The nice thing about the dynamic route is that you're not referencing any notes directly. Uh, when directly referencing notes, like we can do with this one, it means it's bound to the um, environment. So if I go to another environment, it's, it doesn't have the same ID and underwater it will break. Of course, it doesn't have to be the overview page itself because we're referencing the root and then we go back to the blocks page. So in this example, we have the uh, just a general content page, which has the multi node tree picker and we can select uh, featured blocks. And this will go to the root of the website then go down until it finds blocks. So if we go ahead and create a second content page underneath the existing content page, it still works exactly the same because it's going back all the way to the root and then to blocks. That is cool and that will probably uh, cover all of my use cases that I could think of where I used XPath in the past. Because this is in Braco, it of course uh, allows us to create something custom. So instead of nearest descendant or self, I'm going to go to uh, custom and type in tutorial step, which is one I created myself. And what this one will do, it's not very descriptive in the back office, but what this one will do is it will look at any nodes that have tutorial in them. So if the name starts with tutorial, it'll pass. Also, the blocks page is now nested, right? So we're going back to the root, then I'm checking for tutorial, and if it's f if it's found one, then I'll look for uh, blocks. Also, we need to add the blocks one. So it, it'll go to root, and it'll, it'll find uh, tutorial, and it'll go find the nearest descendant or self of type blocks. If we now try this, we can see that even though the blocks page is nested, uh, and because it's underneath tutorial, it'll return us the blocks. If I now rename this one to test, for example, and we'll go back to the content page, it'll tell us that nothing is matching the content. So I, I changed it back to tutorial, and of course this is also working when we have multiple uh, nodes with the same start name, because it's branching off. It doesn't look into one direction, 
uh, it, it looks into uh, multiple directions and then when it finds one it'll return it see here uh, we now have two tutorials and it's still returning blocks from the left the other one so how does this look in code so the Umbraco builder interface uh, now has a new uh, collection called dynamic root steps and then we can append our own one and I, I called it tutorial dynamic root query step which is a very long name but that, that's the name of the interface is a dynamic root query step. In this class I implement this interface and what it does is right now it's injecting a content service because we do need that when uh, looking up stuff and it will add a uh, very long method which I will scroll to the right. It's a task so it, it can be asynchronous that uh, returns an attempt with a collection of GUID and it will be it execute a sync and what you'll get in is the collection of GUIDs it already has. So the orange origins that were before this one. It's not referencing the origin itself, uh, only if it's the first time this is stepping in. Uh, but anything that has been filtered out before will be returned in this one. Then we'll also pass in the d dynamic root query step, which is basically uh, this step in the back office. So the tutorial step as a class. So this method is pretty long right now. Kind of weird to get your head around it at first, because I really had to look at the source uh, code and an example on GitHub in the original pull request before I could understand what's going on. Uh, first of all, we're awaiting a completed task because I do not have anything in sync, but that makes it a bit easier to work with down below. Uh, then you need to check for the alias of the filter. So what's actually happening in, happening in the source code is going through every uh, dynamic root query step that's registered in the, the, the service container. And it, for each step, it's going through all of them. So you need to check if the alias is matching uh, your configured alias. And this is also what you put in the back office. Uh, otherwise we return a failed attempt and what that means is that when it's uh, returning a failed attempt it will go to the next step only when at an attempt is successful and the return collection is not null it will return that to the back office i'm not sure why it is like this uh, this is what i saw in the source code so i just copied this over this step just to make sure i'm not breaking anything when i was playing around with it i saw some exceptions before uh, doing this seems to fix it. So these two are kind of boilerplate, right? Uh, you would expect for the, the calling class to check this and this. It's not doing that for whatever reason, probably to uh, make uh, the customization as big as possible. This is just some boilerplate that you need to do. So from here on, our own logic starts. First of all, what we're doing is we're getting all the content items as their eye content uh, model, because the origins is only a collection of goods. So we need to convert those through the content service into some uh, classes that we can work with. Then we got to check for null because for some reason this returns a nullable uh, enumerable. So we got to check for null. And then we're going to loop through every one of the origin. And what we're going to do in there, we're going to get all the children of the current item paged. This is probably not the best, <laughs> best example because it's only got the first 100 items. If it has more than 100, then it's going to fill. So you might want to write this a bit, little bit better, but, but this is of course just for the tutorial. Then we're going to filter the children and we're going to check if their name is starting with tutorial. The name is nullable for whatever reason, so we're going to check for null uh, and then we're going to check for true. If any items are filtered, then we're going to convert them back into a collection of GUIDs and we're going to return an attempt that succeeded with the GUIDs. And that means that this iteration of steps has succeeded, but this time I'm not sure what's happening when multiple GUIDs are returned when the steps have finished, which might be possible because we could program that right here, right? But you could just return all children every time. Uh, I'm not sure if Embraco sees that and just picks the first one or whatever. Uh, it's un unclear this time. Couldn't find it in the source code either. And then this one, if we're all the way down here and we want to return uh, succeed with an empty array, and this is so that it doesn't throw an exception. Because if I make this fail, then it's going to throw an exception. So I'm just going to make it succeed and then it will show us a friendly message. Friendly message is of course this one. No content matching uh, instead of an exception. Uh, one thing that is good to know is that this will be executed when the page loads. So right now when I load the page, the query dynamic root is executed. Uh, not when I open the, the tree picker. Uh, I could see for that to cause some problems, right? Because if you have a lot of multi-down tree pickers on one page, it's going to execute them all. You would probably expect it to only execute if you select one, but I'm not sure on that one. Might be an optimization for Embraco to uh, include later. Also, if you're using Composer, also if you're using a Composer with the Embraco Builder to add a new query step, then make sure that you're using add composers in your builder, because I do see this missing sometimes. So that is it for this video. I think this is a very fitting solution to replace XPath because I believe that multinode tree picker is the only place where it was used before. Pretty outdated, it wasn't really, well, it was working of course, but it was uh, just a thing to know. Uh, and I kept finding myself looking at 
old documentation from all the Mraka versions just to understand XPath for the Multimon Tree Picker. I think this one is pretty uh, very fitting and it's a great uh, new feature. That's it for this video. I thank you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.